Y'all here at OS Reviews, you're watching our video unboxing and first impressions look of the GTEC E180. This is a mini 3D printer that sells for only $245 and sometimes goes on sale for even less. It's insane to think that uh, in 2018, we can pick up a 3D printer with Wi-Fi and a touchscreen display at such a low price point. Uh, this makes it extremely affordable and easy to print small objects, maybe if you're repairing something or if you want to create your own phone case, things like that. It's easy to control and even has a smartphone companion app for printing and managing your prints. Um, so you can find it directly on Gearbest and other specifications of the unit include a building volume of 130 by 130 by 130 millimeters. So again, this isn't going to print uh, larger objects. Um, and you know furniture or anything like that but it could be a great uh, small 3d printer to experiment with maybe your first 3d printer since it seems quite simple to set up and start using or even for schools to pick up for clubs and other purposes um, it has what they call you know a pretty stable uh, extruder for the plastic that they they say is easy to control using the app motion controlled without too much shaking or clogging or jamming so it has some safety measures built on in it has a cloud-based easy print 3D app for the phone that you can use a 3.2 inch touchscreen TFT LCD display which is capacitive and also a textured area for you to work with for the actual printouts. So again, very uh, impressive specifications for the price. Some other stock images before, before we dive into the box here. This is uh, what it looks like. Uh, pretty sleek, doesn't take up too much space at all on a desk uh, and again some other features printed on here. The box here is pretty generic, there's not too much uh, going on. Uh, no logos on the outside but if we open it up here, we have just right on top the GTEC E180 3D printer manual printed in black and white, telling us the accessories that they're including. Uh, it seems like there's also a micro SD card that they included. Maybe that contains the operating system for the Wi-Fi module and uh, some other very quick uh, details. I would actually recommend kind of reading through this very briefly if you've never used a 3D printer before to make th make sure the setup process is correct. And here is another quick start guide and packing list. Taking the styrofoam out of the cardboard, we can see all the contents already in these um, pockets. And what's really interesting is on the inside of the box, it seems like is where all the logos are. So maybe it was folded the wrong way or uh, disguised for the sake of customs. I'm not really sure, but you can tell that this is what the box really should have looked like. E180 and there's also a QR code that you can scan inside with your phone. Um, I will briefly mention that the opposite side of this paperwork uh, also includes a setup process for uh, popping up the filament stand made out of plastic, putting in power, and then setting up the app on your phone by downloading through the Play Store, iOS Store, or for Windows. First compartment, we see some starter filament, which is for free and just for testing and alignment purposes. Uh, you can definitely print something out that's fairly small already with this. Um, it just uses a standard ABS plastic. It's a pretty typical filament that you can find. You know, as refills, of course, online, Amazon, or Gearbest. Um, down below here, we have another pocket, which includes uh, what looks like some of the, maybe the, the components for the stand that we have to pop up for the filament made out of metal. There's also a USB 2.0 cable. It attaches like this uh, very similar plug to any other a regular printer that you may already have by maybe HP. And the other side goes into your computer if you want to uh, use a wired connection for transferring over your prints and uh, schematics. Over here we have the screwdrivers for assembling uh, the printer. It shouldn't take too long to fully assemble. Um, what we here have here is the nozzle for the printer, and then here we have the aforementioned one gigabyte micro SD card. In this compartment, we have just the charging brick, which has been really carefully packaged with a very standard uh, kind of plug that looks like this. Flipping the styrofoam 180 degrees in the back side, we have the other part, the second part for the charger. This is the wall plug, uh, and again, this just plugs into the charger on the other side, about the same size as a large bulky desktop or a older uh, laptop computer. Now for the center compartment, if we lift up the styrofoam, we have the 3D printer inside. Um, it's actually what looks like more or less assembled already, so again the screws are probably just for adding or repairing things in the future. Frame here is made out of plastic and aluminum. Here's what the entire kit looks like uh, when we place it on a surface. I have the stand that I assembled. It took about, uh, about three minutes to screw in these two screws, and then of course you attach the base as well. The stand is actually made out of aluminum, so it has a good construction quality, and you can see the 
settlement stays in place pretty well, you simply, uh, when you want to use it, loop the open end of the filament into the machine on the back, and then uh, it will automatically keep on feeding itself. So a pretty nice little extra display stand as part of the value. This is the uh, 3D printer itself. It's fairly small. It's uh, I see next to a iPhone 6S Plus, uh, the size comparison here, it's about uh, two of the iPhone stacked on top of one another in terms of height, so you get a better idea of the overall dimensions. And then a standard kind of A11 uh, A piece of uh, paper, you can see that it's about the same size as well. So I'm definitely not a large printer by any means, it doesn't take up that much space. A few things I want to point out, the nozzle here was actually a replacement. So you get a secondary nozzle in case this one breaks, so it's a nice little extra. And the SD card that they give you doesn't include the operating system. That's just for you if you want to have any uh, print uh, models dragged from a computer into an SD card, the printer can read it itself and print it out that way. So you can use the SD card for printing, you can use a computer for printing, or you can use Wi-Fi and the smartphone app for printing. So quite a few different ways. Next, it also includes what looks like this tape. It's basically just to prevent the filament from sticking onto the base, which is made out of aluminum when you are printing. Right now, it's actually covered with uh, tape already by the manufacturer, but you can peel it off and use this one uh, instead. View of the printer from the back. This is actually the compartment where the filament, it needs to be feeded into, and then it heats it up and melts it, of course, into plastic. And then, of course, we have the base, which can vertically roll, and of course, the arm as well, to capture an object and to you know, increase the height as it starts printing it out. This is the charging port at the bottom along with the USB port and the micro SD card slot if you want to put in a memory card, again with uh, updated firmware or of course uh, printouts. It works with basically any other 3D printing software uh, widely available for Windows. So you can just plug it in if you have a software such as CAD for designing 3D printouts. It uh, you know can be exported from there and just directly print it. So pretty nice in terms of uh, in compatibility. There is the capacity, there's a touchscreen in the front, which is 3.2 inches. Um, you can see it's an LCD panel. It actually is resistive and not capacitive, so you need to apply a little bit more pressure. Um, otherwise, it looks pretty nice. There is a dedicated power switch on the front as well that will glow when the unit is on, and um, there's also a running fan, of course, to cool things down and prevent it from getting overheated. So there's a bit of background sound. Uh, keep that in mind. It's not completely silent. A quick look at the Android app before an ending this video. It's simply called Easy Print 3D and tapping on it. Uh, first, you have to log in by creating an email and a password, and uh, afterwards you can add the printer pretty easily. So the first page here is just a almost a social media feed that tells you what other people are printing, their projects. You can take a look at their schematics if they're sharing it. So it's a social media feed just for these printers, and then there's also news related to 3D printing. Down below here, I can tap on print, and that will allow you to connect to your printer, play, uh, pause, and begin the printing process, turn on the printer, and also take a look at the temperature information. Under gallery, you can take a look at uh, different types of objects that you can start printing out, and there's also a few samples on here that are available in the cloud, um, SD card, and so on and so forth. Under me, you can take a look at your profile, your printers, and printer profiles. So the app itself is pretty simple and straightforward. It connects, uh, the printer connects to Wi-Fi, and then your phone, of course, is also connected to Wi-Fi. So, so the entire process is cloud automated. You can uh, begin prints anywhere else in the world as long as your phone is connected to the internet and you open the app, which is pretty cool. So again, to hear the fan, you can see that this is what the light is gonna be. This is the brightness of the display, and you can definitely hear that in the background it's not silent, but at the same time, it's not too bad either. Um, so that's been our unboxing and first impressions look at the GTEC uh, E180 3D printer or mini 3D printer. And we'll be doing a bit more testing, of course, and coming out with some more videos in the future. But for now, this has just been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Review.